Good afternoon. Sagal, as we say. Um, the way that uh, we've always introduced ourselves to the people ever since I can ever remember as a little child, you know, they say you, you, we came through the waters of. So I came through the waters of Gutchie Junie Thomas. And she came through the waters of, of uh, Ginny Thomas. And she came through the waters of Caroline Thomas. So that we always know who we are and where we, where we came from. So uh, that's, that's who I am. Um, my mother was Mohawk from the Mohawk Nation, and my father was Cayuga. We come from the Haudenosaunee people or the Iroquois people, um, linguistic group. Um, um, actually, our original homelands were here in New York State. Uh, New York State, but we moved to um, Ontario in 1784 when we allied with the British. And of course, they lost the war, so we were given land in, in southern Ontario under the Haldeman Deed. So that's where I live right now in the Six Nations uh, territory in southern Ontario, um, coming from originally New York State. So I'm very honored to be here today. Um, to share uh, some of the, uh, I guess, a little bit of the, of the uh, women's, women's knowledge uh, of that, what I grew up with and, and, and the way that we were taught to live. Um, we are a matriarchal society, the Haudenosaunee people, meaning that the women have a big, big responsibility and um, uh, humong humongous responsibility and that's to, to uh, rear and raise the children in, a, in, in the first stage of growth and development. We, we look at four stages of growth and development in our culture. And of course, the first stage is from birth to puberty. And it's 100% it's, it's the woman's role to raise that child, um, to prepare that child, I should say, for the next three three stages. And so we're longhouse people. We come from the people of the longhouse. And um, you know, we're, we're finding out through the archaeologists today that there was probably three, sometimes 300 families that lived in a longhouse. And I've always wondered, how did we get along? How did we what was the secret or what was the key? There must have been something really um, important that we knew in order to, to have, a good have good relationships. And so I went to the old people. I was very fortunate, uh, very honored um, to listen to a lot of old people growing up and to listen to their words. And so I went to them and I asked them, you know, what, what was the secret to good relationships in a longhouse? And they laughed at me, of course. They always laugh at me when I ask questions. <laughs> and they said, oh, that's so simple, Gahadil. That's my name, Gahadil. That is so, you should know that. Well, I didn't know it. They said, it's only three things. Just three things is all it took. I said, well, what is it? The women knew how to look after the men. The men knew how to look after the women. And the women and men knew how to look after the children. It's called roles and responsibilities. It's so simple. It's just so simple. It's only been probably maybe two to three generations where our people the indigenous people never had the privilege of making a mistake. We never had that privilege and opportunity of making a mistake. Because if we forgot to plant our corn, we wouldn't be eating. We wouldn't have any food. There was no Zayers back then or whatever those <laughs> stores are. We never had that opportunity. So this first stage of growth and development very, very important. And it's the women's role to, to 
to teach all those things. And so, as a small child, the old people would say, listen, put your ears up like the rabbit, they would say, and you listen. Because someday, you're going to need this, what I'm going to tell you. So, we were taught very early to listen. And then they said, use your voice, because we're an oral society. Use your voice. Your voice is your medicine. I said, yeah. They said, your voice is your medicine. Whether it's speaking, whether it's making people laugh, whether it's yelling, as we do in our ceremonies, whether it's uh, crying, whether it's singing, that's your medicine. Use it. And it's so true. So there's two things that we were told we need to carry. That every, you know, the woman especially needs to carry these things. And they said, when you come into this life, when you're born, you come through that water into this physical life. They said, you come and you carry your medicine bundle. I didn't know what they were talking about. They said, you got to car carry your medicine bundle. I thought, where do I get this bundle? I go to Kmart or Walmart, I don't know. <laughs> you know they, and all they would say to us is, when you're ready, it'll be given to you. It'll come. And I thought, wow, you know, what is this about? But I was also taught, we don't have any why in the Mohawk language. There's no word for why. So I couldn't ask why, mm -hmm. you know. I just had to wait and see. And so, you know, they said, when you're ready, as they would say, when you're ready, your teacher will come. And they said, your teacher may not always be in human form. So this is a teacher. The eagle feather is a teacher. The turtle is one of the biggest teachers. And that's the, my clan is the turtle clan. And so, you know, they said, all you got to do is listen. So I listened well. I was taught to listen well, but also to speak. And um, they said, my mother and my grandma and my great-grandmother, they would always say, never stop talking. So today when I, you read in the history books about our people, oh, they're very stoic. They... That's not so. Our people talk, they never stop talking. Those women never stop talking and singing and dancing and they never stop working. So that's why I guess I, I became a talker. And they said, because that your first teacher is listening. Your first teacher is what you hear after you come into this life. You may not understand it, but it'll all be in here. Scott Nagoon, as they would say, the power of the good mind as a human being. And then that power comes to here, that heart, heart power. So they said, just, just keep talking. Just keep singing. They know those songs. Just keep doing what you need to do, and you'll learn those things. So... I had a little bit of a catch-up to do in my life. Uh, my dad, he, um, he went to residential schools. That's the government church boarding schools. His mother died in childbirth having twins, and he went there when he was four years old. He was a baby, and he went there, and he was there till age 14. My dad was, never did lose his language, however. He was a fluent Mohawk speaker, and my mother as well. But he, he, many things were taken from him. His, his ability to parent was one of them. And so even though he and my mother, had, we, there was 10 of us, he never hugged us. He never hugged us. He didn't know how to hug. He was never taught that. But thank goodness my mother knew all that. Mm -hmm.